Welcome to this Mathematics Taster Lecture. I'm Dr. Margit Mesmer. I'm a teaching fellow in the School of Mathematics at the University of Leeds. So in this Taster Lecture today I want to talk about what it means to be round and I want to take this as an example to illustrate the importance of precise definitions in mathematics. So let's suppose you walk through the Yorkshire countryside and you find one of these ancient stone circles and you want to check whether this is really a circle. Or let's suppose you walk into a hallway and you see some nice pillars there in these pencil shaped shapes and you want to check whether the cross section of these pillars are circles. Um, so the first thing you might think of when you want to check whether something is round, whether a physical object is round, you might um, take out some calipers and measure the width at a certain um, angles all around. So, and if you have a circle and you measure the circle at, at sort of any, any angle around, of course, you always get the same measurement. Now, it turns out that this is quite misleading. And in fact, it turns out that there are other shapes, for example, one that looks like this, that you can put in a caliper and measure its width at various different um, angles and you always get the same number, the same measurement. So what this object is that is in our caliper there on the screen is what is called a Rolo triangle and I'm just going to briefly go through um, what it actually is or how it's constructed. So you start with a nice equilateral triangle like here in the in the picture all sides have the same length in our case we'll call it A and all angles are the same, 60 degrees. And what you do then is you, you draw um, circular arcs of radius A over each of the sides, like so. So you draw these three circular arcs. Um, they intersect at the corners. You take the triangle away and you end up with a really low triangle. Um, if you now measure the width of, of this shape at any at any angle all around, you all its width is always a the radius of that circle um, that we that we used. So it is what is what it's called a shape of constant width. It has the same width all all the way around, and obviously it, it is not a circle. We can we can see that. Now these these shapes don't only occur on on our paper pads or on our screens. They actually occur in in real life. So for example, Bermuda has issued a coin exactly in this Rolo shape um, for the um, to remind people of the Bermuda triangle. Um, also, these uh, Rolo triangles are not the only shapes of constant widths. that are not circles. There are, in fact, our twenty pence coin and the 50 pence coin are shapes of constant width. They are based on, um, on um, shapes with, with seven corners. Um, and there is also a Canadian coin, a Canadian loony, that is based on an, an, um, a shape with 11 corners that is um, also a shape of constant width. Um, so you might have noticed that the number of corners here is an odd number. We had 3 and 7 and 11. Um, if you look at the um, pound coin, it is actually, it has 12 corners and it's actually not a shape of constant width. And, and people were concerned that these, uh, this would cause problems in vending machines. But the, the difference in width is so small that it actually doesn't, doesn't matter. Um, Right, so um, as I pointed out, we could, we could start with any regular shape of um, a regular poly, what's called a regular polygon, let's say here in the picture with five corners, a pentagon, and go through this exactly the same construction. Draw uh, circular arcs over each of the sides and we end up with a shape of constant width that is, that is not a circle. And actually it turns out we could um, start with any triangle um, and do a clever construction where we extend the sides, like here in this in this picture, and end up with with a shape of constant width. So there, there are in fact infinitely many different um, shapes of uh, that that have constant width. Um, if we start out with a regular polygon with an even number of sides, like a square, and draw the the um, um, 
a circular arc, so over each side, we, we end up with a circle. So it, it this, this simple in, um, construction we started out with really only works with odd numbered shapes. Right, so these these um, shapes also occur in a number of applications. So for example, guitar spec uh, plectrums, some of them have a rollo shaped. And there are even um, um, people in China who have constructed, they've actually built a bicycle with rollo shaped wheels. You see the back wheel of this bicycle is actually a rollo shape. The front wheel is um, based on, on the pentagon. What you also notice is that the frame of this bicycle actually sits on the top of the wheels. And we come back to that later. Um, in a more practical application, um, the rollo shape can actually be used to drill square holes, which we see here in this in this video. So we can attach the the blades here to the to the edge of the of the rollo shape, attach it to a, a drill bit, and it will drill out a more or less square hole out of a piece of wood. And these these um, drill bits do exist in. In, in realities, carpenters use it, except that the, the, the corners are actually not, not really pointed, so the corners are slightly round. So we haven't gone quite as far as building a bicycle, but um, we've built a, a, a rollo cart, so it's wheels, there are six wheels, each of them is, has a, is uh, shaped as a, like a rollo triangle, and if you watch the so if, if this, this shape really has constant width, then if I put a surface, a flat surface on top and roll it along, that surface should not go up and down. And if you watch the surface, it is really um, horizontal. It, it doesn't wobble up and down, as this, this, this video illustrates. Right, so what is a circle then? Well, it probably doesn't come as a surprise that a the definition, the precise definition of a circle is that it is the set of points in the plane that have, have the same distance from a given point. Yeah, we know that a, a, a circle has a center and the circle is then given as the set of points that have this constant distance, namely the radius from, from the center. Um, so on, on the right here you see an, an ancient book where people figured out what the circumference of a circle is, namely 2 pi r. Um, I'm sure you, you're aware of that, or pi times the diameter. Um, what you might not necessarily know is that this formula also applies to these shapes of constant width that we talked about. So for even if you're not, if you if you don't have a, a circle in front of you, but you know the shape has constant width, its its circumference is pi times the diameter. That's um, referred to as Barbier's theorem. Right, but um, so back to our um, reload cart or the the bicycle. The reason that we can't put a an axle through the center of the rollo wheel is exactly um, reflected in the fact that the rollo triangle uh, or, or any of these other shapes we discussed does not satisfy this de definition that's in front of us. So if we, if we were to look at the center or what we would think of the center of the rollo, rollo triangle and we would, uh, we would construct a wheel with that shape, it would actually wobble up and down because the, the um, points on the edge do not have a constant distance from, from that center. So to, to illustrate that these how important these definitions are, not only in the context of abstract mathematics, but also in, in, in practice, um, uh, we'll have a look at the space shuttle. Um, so this, the space shuttle program um, suffered a big setback back in 1986 when the Challenger exploded just a, over a minute into its flight and, and it, uh, killing seven, or seven, all seven crew members. So a commission looked into the reasons for this explosion and they uh, found out that the O-rings didn't seal the rocket booster properly and the, um, the, the fuel escaped and, and ignited and the, uh, the Challenger exploded. 
um, so this commission looked looked at this very carefully, and one member of the commission was Richard Feynman. He was a theoretical physicist who also made big contributions to to mathematics. So now these these O-ring seals they had of course been tested under extreme conditions because they have to withstand very high temperature changes. And Feynman asked the engineers how they had checked whether the o-ring seals kept their shapes and it turned out that the engineers had done exactly what we did in our first few slides with the caliper what they did is they measured the the width of the of the o-rings at various angles and Feynman realized that never mind how many um, angles they would have checked even if they would have gotten the same width all around it would not have told them that these o-rings kept the same shape now, this, um, this has potentially contributed to this disaster. There were other issues that um, at the time, there were, there, it was also very cold in Florida when the, when the challenger started and that might, might have contributed to, this, to these O-ring problems as well. So where is the maths in all this? So um, when we look at this in an abstract way, so what we're essentially looking at is a kind of, is a closed curve in the plane. And we are looking essentially at two statements, namely this curve being a circle and this curve having constant width. And we are interested in how these two statements are related. Now, if we look at the implication from left to right, if we assume that, that our curve is a circle, then certainly it has constant width. It's, namely its diameter all the way around. So we know that. So that the, this implication um, certainly holds. Now the, the other implication is exactly the problem. Um, so the, if we have a shape of constant width, we cannot conclude that it is a circle. And in fact, our Rolo triangle that we, that we looked at is what we call a counterexample. And those are the kinds of things that um, students learn in, in mathematics to get to grips with, with precise definition and to imply to, to apply them when drawing conclusions. So thanks very much for listening.